to hear. He's smart. <laughs> All right, I will, I will begin with a word of prayer. I will, attempt, I will attempt to begin with a word of prayer. Ahem. Ahem. Thank you. Dear Father, we uh, thank you for this day. Again, I thank you for these students and for a good semester. I pray that you'd just help us to use this time wisely just to review for the, the remaining test. Lord, in your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Uh-oh. I think I better put it us on mute. Usually that probably means that uh, Dr. Dinsmore's uh, mic is still plugged in, actually, remotely, you know? What? Hey, don't stop it. All right, so um, let's see here. Um, first of all, just disclaimer, the grading on Mission 10 is um, generous. And so it is possible that you've done complete nonsense and still gotten a lot of credit um, as I graded it. Now, some things I know and I can just see like, no, that's not correct. Like, for example, I asked to find the gravitational acceleration um, on that one later problem. And if your answer was not a vector, then you're probably wrong. Um, now, I may or may not have noticed that you did that, but some of you I did. Others of you, like the, the energy diagram is just so obviously wrong, I could take points off. Um, so, I mean, there's some just kind of glaring errors I picked up on. Obviously, if you left it blank, I noticed that, you know, I think. So that's the, the nature of the grading is very coarse, all right? Um, as you can see, we have a visitor. This is my son, Benjamin. <laughs> oh. Benjamin, Benjamin is the holder of the cookies, which of course have nothing to do with course evaluations. Have you done your course evaluation, though? Yeah. Oh, you have? OK. Oh, well. If you haven't yet, first eat the cookie, then do the evaluation. Um, oh, that smells good. So Benjamin, you can take those around to the people. Do not drop them on the floor. Otherwise, we'll all be very sad. Just take them around. Just take them around. They'll they won't bite. I'll let Benjamin just go all around. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, <coughs> So um, let me um, let me talk about the solution here. So um, unfortunately, at the moment, I don't have a complete solution for Mission Ten to show you. I um, I'm I'm working on it. I uh, I, d I decided it'd probably be more more useful to you for me to give you back your solution so you can compare your solution to my complete solution. I'll hopefully post later today. Um, I do have the first four or five problems solved, so let's look at those. All right, yep. It looks like mission nine solution posted. I, I thought I posted mission nine yesterday. Well, that's weird. I, I mean, I, I, if I didn't post Mission 9, it means I got distracted mid-task yesterday, which is possible. I'm kind of sick at the moment. Don't worry, I didn't make the cookies. My wife as well. I've been sleeping in a chair. It's safe. Let's see here. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah, modules. Mm. All right. There's Mission 8 solution. Mission 9. Well, what on earth? That is aggravating because I specifically sat down at my computer to post Mission 9 solution yesterday and I just didn't. Well, thank you for telling me about that. That is aggravating. Oh. 
Somebody traded it? Yes. <laughs> really? Is that for you? Yes. Do you like those? Okay. Did you say thank you? Did you, did you say thank you? Yes. Okay, okay. Second. All right, well, now, now it's posted. So, so, sorry about that. I obviously um, don't mean to uh, deprive you of the Mission 9 solution. Um, just a second, I'm looking it up. It feels hot in here. Let's see here. All right, there we go. All right, so let me let me talk about mission 10 here. I'll blow it up a bit. Um, here you go, Ben. You can play that. So, um, problem one: derive Kepler's. Use you know basically look at Kepler's law, figure out the um, how much bigger the radius of the uh, mean orbital radius of Mars orbit is compared to Earth. Um, I say mean orbital areas. The, ba the bas basic idea is you can approximate the, um, the elliptical orbit of Mars by a circle, and, and if you do that, then we can fall back on our mv squared over r as the net, um, net force, which is center seeking in this context because circular motion is supplied by gravity, which is gmm over r squared. Now, the velocity is 2 pi the radius over the, t the period, so I put, put that in, and that gives me, um, wait a minute, what happened here? V squared is GM over. Oh yeah, I, I just solved. I can't do math. Um, v squared. If I if I multiply, divide by m and divide by r, or multiply by r if you like, we get that. But v is two pi r over t squared, so I do that. This gives me r cubed over t squared is GM over pi squared. Of course, this is interesting because GM over pi for pi squared, it's the same for all the different planets, right? So the ratio. You guys seen the Super Mario movie? Oh yeah, that was a good movie. How about you, Benjamin? Did you see it? Yes! Oh yes, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, excuse me for, I, I, <laughs> forgive me for saying otherwise. No, they, they had a birthday party, they all went, so, the, uh, our old neighbor. Um, I did not go, I just, I heard the description, it was either for kids or people who were like lifelong gamers, and I'm like, eh, it's dummy, so. Um, <clears throat> but you guys enjoyed it? Okay, good. All right, so um, let's see here. Where was I? So this is the, this is the idea that the, the cube of the orbit divided by the square of the period is a constant for all the planets. So we can equate the cube of the Earth orbit to the square of the Earth period to the cube of the Martian orbit to the square of the Martian year, right? And if I solve for the Martian radius... Um, I get this formula. And then, of course, the radius of the Earth orbit is by definition essentially one astronomical unit. And so, um, in time for a year, Earth year is, well, a year. So the years cancel. I get 1.88 squared, cube root of that, and this is the answer. Any questions about this one? Yep. Wait a minute, what? Oh, fair enough. I mean the distance from the center of the sun to Mars is when I ask for the distance to Mars. Now, if you're thinking about how far it is to Mars, at, like its distance of closest approach, that may be what you calculated? I didn't, I just calculated oh. I think you just meant the radius. Yeah, I meant the radius. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh. Hmm. All right. Anyway, let's go on here. Um, 
problem 110. You measure the gravitational acceleration at a particular altitude is 2 meters per second squared. After hiking 10 kilometers vertically, you find the gravitational acceleration has dropped to 1 meter per second squared. Find the mass of the mystery planet and determine your initial distance from the center of the planet. So here's a very stupid picture of what's going on. Initially, I'm at the surface of the planet and I have 2 meters per second acceleration. Then I, I, um, you know, I hike a mountain. Um, and up to you know 10 kilometers up, and then the acceleration due to gravity drops to one meter per second squared. So this is a stupid picture of it. Um, now the acceleration due to gravity is gm over r plus h squared, where r is the radius of the planet, h is the altitude. Of course, this just drops back to gm over r squared at the at altitude zero, right? Um, and that where is this coming from? This is just coming from setting ma equal to gmm over r squared, where r is the distance from the center. squared. <laughs> All right. That's kind of scary. Um, the most awesome time I've ever brought a kid to school was I brought his older brother. He was about that size when I did this. And I brought him to school and he was, it was, I think it was linear algebra. And it was one of those small rooms down in the second story, second floor, you know, smaller rooms. But it's got this lecture, right? So Daniel was up under there, like coloring. And we come into the classroom a couple minutes early, right? So another student, he walked in. He didn't know Daniel was there. So about like 15 minutes into the class, after Daniel gets bored coloring, all of a sudden, he just runs out from under the lectern. <laughs> and it freaks this guy out. He's like, whoa! Because he wasn't expect it was awesome. It was just awesome. It was not intentional, but it was it was beautiful. Um, but anyway. Okay, so <clears throat> on the one hand we have gm over r plus h squared is equal to one meter per second, squ per second squared. On the other hand, we have gm over r squared is equal to two meters per second squared, right? And so we also know that h is equal to ten kilometers. So we've got two equations and two unknowns. The two unknowns are the mass of the planet and the radius of the planet. And so I found it most convenient to solve for GM. No. Yes. And if I do that, I get r plus h squared is equal to 2 times r squared. And then that gives me this equation, which gives me this equation. Oh, man. No, I'm wrong. I was hurrying before class. I see I made a mistake here, right? That was supposed to be minus h squared. That changes this entirely. Sorry, you fix it. I thought, wow, this worked out really cool. Yeah, yeah. So the algebra I should have had was r squared minus 2rh, right? Um, um, minus h squared, right? Which, <clears throat> if I complete the square on this, So this gives me, which gives me um, but I think we want r to be positive, so I think the answer should have been h times 1 plus root 2. In other words, about 24.14 kilometers, something like that. Is that what you guys got? Anybody get that? Yeah, some people? OK, good. Yeah, so sorry, that, that's, that's wrong. And then because I did that wrong, my math, as it's currently I'm about to get to, will be also wrong because it's based on. So just to solve for the mass, I, um, you know, this, this is supposed to be, it's, it should be bigger, right? All right, anyway. I did not take points off if you were wrong because I was not that careful in my grading, right? OK, so problem 111. This one I'm, I'm, I'm much more certain of. <laughs> Calculate the, uh, the radius of the Earth, assuming that you're given the mass and the, um, um, 
Of course, we know that the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of Earth is about 9.8 meters per second squared, right? So um, I solve for the radius of the Earth. I mean, first of all, I set ma equal to gmm over r squared because, well, Newton's second law and, and the universal um, law of gravitation, right? So ma is equal to gmm over the radius of the Earth squared. I cancel the m's, the little m's, which don't matter. That, of course, the acceleration we call g at the surface, right? And um, then I solve for the radius of the Earth. I get this. I plug in the numbers, 6.67 um, times 10 to minus 11, 5.97 times 10 to the 24th, which was provided for us in the problem. 9.8 is roughly, I mean, if you put 9.79, whatever, right? Um, and so I get 6,375,800 6, meters, also known as about, you know, 6,400 um, kilometers, give or take a thing here. Any questions? Okay. Here's the Superman problem. Um, so here again, this is just a play on the ge geosynchronous orbit problem. We set the gravitational force equal to mv squared over r because it's going in a circle. Um, in this case, we know that the, the orbital period is 36 hours, right? So I solve for the radius and I get the cube root of all this. And I do 1.5 times 86,400 because I happen to uh, remember there are 86,400 seconds in a day. And um, yeah, that's what you get. So I got 55,341 kilometers. So anybody else get that? Okay, good. This one here. So, um, is okay. Um, a lot of you, the people who lost points, pretty much I'm complaining that you haven't supplied these ones down here. There's always like a symmetry um, in these pictures. Whatever happens up here gets replicated down here, essentially because it's based on energy conservation and you have one half mv squared for kinetic energy, right? So if you have energy v, you also have energy minus v. Like they're always a package deal, but they both give you the same kinetic energy. So they're both potentially possible in the phase plane. There's always a, a duplication of the pattern above and below. Um, so, so anyway, um, this one up here is kind of the most annoying one because there's no place where the velocity is zero. You always have some kinetic energy, right? It's just you have a little bit less here and here and here as you do the more kinetic energy here, obviously, and there the most of all, right? So, and, and this is very approximate, right? If I was doing this correctly, the, I should have like the same velocity for the same gap between the total energy level and the, and the potential energy, right? So like for instance, this and this are pretty, they're like two blocks in my picture, right? If you look between energy E2 and the bottom of this potential well, it's about, it's about a little bit more than two blocks, but it's kind of similar. So this, this velocity here, right? It should be kind of similar to this velocity here. And I was, I mean, it's a little bit more. So I guess I'm kind of right. I'm just saying I haven't been super um, litigious about making sure that I have the same velocity corresponding to the same kinetic energy. But if I was going to be very careful, that's what I should try to do. Um, but, but these pictures are qualitative, and this is, this is roughly what you get. So the one we did in class was also nice, right? Like the one we did in class was, is a little bit better example, actually. And I think that's the end of my solution here. We can go back and look at mission nine solution. Actually, are there, are there any questions? Like, so the test is Monday, right? Test three. One of you asked me, like, when will I post the grade and stuff like that. And so the answer is I will grade test three as fast as I can. And then hopefully I'll have it so you could pick it up Tuesday if, I, if everything goes as I'd like. Um, so anyway, I'll, I will make an announcement once I have it ready to pick up, you know. But I, I would hope. At the latest, I should have it graded like end of business Tuesday, you know? That would be my hope. So, what is it? You're picking the game. You should do the blocks. That one's good. I don't like that one. All right. So, any questions about the material? Yes, sir. Like 
Yes. So um, <clears throat> hypothetically, if you made a 90% on the final, right? Um, any grade you made before that was less than 90%, I would replace with that. Um, the way I'll do it is I'll make a um, I'll make a column in Canvas. It's called like modified test total, and there I will put the points that you earned, either from keeping your test grade that you already have, or from replacing it with a final exam where it's helpful. But I only I only do it in a benevolent fashion. All right. So if you made a you know, if you made 100 on one of your tests, um, which I, how many points do we have on a test? 150, so 100 would be great. So 150, suppose you made 150 on one of your tests, right? You want to keep that, right? So I wouldn't, you know, if you make a 70 on the final, like, percent, I'm not going to, like, take your 150 and turn it to a 70 or something, right? <laughs> but, I mean, I, I mean, I'd like to, but that's generally generally frowned upon to change like, you know, you can't, you're not allowed to change the syllabus like right before the final is the general point of order, right? Especially not while people are like filling out course evaluations. That would be especially dumb. <laughs> but <laughs> no, um, but that, that is my intention. So because of course, um, some of you had trouble in, you know, test one or test two and it's understandable. Physics takes time to kind of learn and so if you if you do better on the final, I'd like to reward you for that. And so yeah, yes. Um, are there uh, certain sections that you should focus on for the final, or is it going to be pretty everything? It should be pretty everything. Um, I try to make it comprehensive. Um, so I'm trying to think. Um, so it should be roughly speaking like a third from test one, a third from test two, a third from test three. Um, yeah. So I have two questions. How many questions are going to be on the final? Mm -hmm. Do you know enough? Enough, of course. Enough. Yes. Okay. Uh, two, is there going to be any of like, the history? But, but like, um, there could be, sure. And, um, but um, in terms of like how many questions, this, <clears throat> this question doesn't have any meaning because I ask questions with like A, B, C, D, you know, like, so like, I tell you there's one question, but it's got A through Z, you know, what does it mean? The better question to ask is how many pages is the final? That has meaning, right? And the answer is not more than I want to grade. So my guesstimate would be around eight, nine, something like that. Yes. So oh, I would recommend studying the missions and the um, the um, the tests, obviously, right? So um, you know, solutions. I would say look at the test one, test two, test three solutions. Um, I might have. I mean, I guess it doesn't hurt to look at what I've done in previous years, right? Um, hmm. I'll let you guys look at that later. <laughs> a final exam on the, you want a final exam on, uh, what's that? I think it's right here. Can you open it? the microphone Well, I turned the sound off, so. Anybody see a mic? If I find it, I'll bring it. Um, Let me see here. Uh, do, do.
But yeah. Huh. I'm in the first grade, Ron. I think. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, it's beware. <laughs> What's a rickroll? What's a rickroll? Uh, I mean, exam food. <laughs> well, it seems I didn't. All right, here's a, uh, here's a final exam I gave in 2012, since you guys asked. Um, so I gave two vectors, length, magnitude, angle between them, angle between these guys, cross product. Yep. Do we still only get one note card for the final? You get one note card for test three. For the final, you guys can bring a page of notes. Front and back, it's fine. <laughs> What's that? One page of notes, front and back. One page of notes, front and back, yep. Printer paper. Yes, printer paper. Only right on two sides. It's like my house. The Constitution. This, this is a page. That whole thing is one page. You know what I mean. Do I need to rip this page off? I mean, it's somebody's homework. It's front and back. What's that? I can go back to three, three by five. All right. There's another problem. Ahem. Ahem. Thank you. So here, <clears throat> this is a pretty, you know, common problem. Contact force between the masses. Um, you know, think about how you figure that out, right? It's you have to do Newton's second law on, on each mass, right? Paired with the fact that the third law makes the contact force of one pushing on two the same as, but equal but opposite to the contact force of two pushing on one. Third law pair, right? It's that one. Um, here you've got a box, you've got a force, 60 degrees. What's the mass of the box? I, I give you the kinetic coefficient, friction. You had to write the free body diagram figure out the net force that's keeping you from, you know, going that way or whatever. Um, let's see here. You strike a baseball with a bat one meter above the ground such that the ball leaves the bat at 25 meters per second. Assume you hit the ball at an angle, horizontal 30 degrees above the horizontal, five meter wall is placed six meters away where you hit the ball. Does the ball go over the wall? So it's a pretty standard kinematics problem. Let's see here. Oh. So here I gave you three vectors. A, notice A points into the origin, whereas B and C point out. And I tell you their magnitudes, 8, 10, 15. And find the magnitude and standard angle of this. Now, you've got to understand, what I did here was I printed it out, and then I drew with like a pen or something, actual angles in here when I gave it to the students. All right. I'm pretty sure that's what happened there. Here, um, I give you force as a function of time, and I say find the acceleration, the velocity, and the position. So here we have F equals MA, and then you're actually integrating to find the velocity, integrating again to find the position. Here I give a force that's variable and depends on X. Find the work done, find the potential energy. So, you know, F is equal to minus DU DX. So you find minus the antiderivative of that for the potential energy. Um, here's a soccer ball. The ball leaves your foot with an initial feed 20 29 meters per second. Collision with the ball took, with your foot takes 0.009 seconds. How, what's the magnitude of the average force of your foot on the ball? 
So this is an um, impulse problem, right? F is equal to dp dt, so the average impulse. And here is a moment of inertia problem. I give you Uh, this one's only six pages. You've got a good point. This one's far too short. Thank you. No. Bringing that to my attention. Okay. No? Just the right number. Just the students I haven't graded a physics final for like three years, though. I'm thirsty. No, no. It's been, it's it's been like... Yeah. No? Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I, uh, I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. So, um, here, here's here's your homework problem. This one's basically your homework problem that you guys just solved. The one that has here, you you throw a ball upward with a speed of eight eight thousand meters per second. What's the maximum height it reaches? Right. So that's essentially the homework. One of the homework problems that you just did, except you had ten thousand instead of eight thousand. Right. That was a problem you just solved. Here's a pretty standard collision problem. 1,000 kilograms, 2,000 kilograms, truck, car colli um, collide. You're supposed to find the velocity and standard angle immediately after the crash. Here they skid to stop 10 meters. What's the coefficient of kinetic, kinetic friction for the road? This was essentially a problem on one of your previous tests, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, there's no problem. Ah! Yes, this problem. The Kanegi clan makes its home on a distant planet of mass M with n moons. Suppose the moons have an identical mass M naught and orbit in a common orbital plane. And suppose that they orbit in a circle distance L from the planet. What's the speed of the lunar orbits? Discuss the limit as n goes to infinity, holding the net mass of the moons fixed. Well, you guys did, we did, I did two moons in class. I did four moons in class, right? You had three moons in the homework. It's only natural to extend to n moons, right? Yeah. That changes the angle. Yeah. This problem is actually not well defined because it assumes an infinite, like an infinite mass density for the ring because I'm saying, well, anyway, it's a long story, but um, I had a student mostly solve this, and then I ended up asking about it on the math stack exchange, and Eventually, I was convinced that the problem doesn't have meaning because it basically is assuming an infinite density of mass. So I, I'd have to change it to make it make sense. Obviously, that's a bonus question, right? But anyway, yeah. I did have a student get a long ways towards answering it. He's now in a postdoc studying the Dirac operators on various fancy spaces. What are you doing? Yeah, five stars, five stars. Anyway, do you guys have questions about the test on Monday, maybe? <laughs> I mean, we, you have a test before the final, right? We could, ask, we could talk about that. Let's look at mission nine. Um, <clears throat> yes? Oh, which missions does test three cover? Oh. I think that was seven. No. This is a good question. If seven was special relativity, we already had that on the previous test. So I think just eight, nine, and ten. If I could find my course planner. Um, yeah, eight, nine, and ten. So it's on um, rotational dynamics, um, you know, rotational kinematics, and then gravity, orbital motion. Yep, and also the history stuff. Possibly, but yeah. What? I don't think it would be anything terribly deep. It'd probably be something like calculate the relativistic energy, or it'd probably be something like the um, the um, the quiz, the bonus quiz that I gave you guys. It'd be like that, probably. Those things. So. Did you ever post? I don't know. If I haven't, if you'd email me about that, that'd be good. 
It's possible that I forgot. What happened? <laughs> How do you crack your back sitting down? I'm intrigued. <laughs> so, so the story begins of how Taylor accidentally broke his own back and now lives in the fourth floor of DeMoss forever. Let's see here. You're a licensed chiropractor for yourself. I, I, I like that. Um, all right, let me... So, um, so just a few words. Um, what, what do you need to know about rotations? Let's think about this. So for, when I think about rotational kinematics, I think about angular acceleration, angular velocity, angle, right? So you should have a cl clear idea in your mind of how you can convert from like degrees to radians to revolutions, right? We have these three competing descriptions of angle. So that's important to know about. The formulas for um, rotational kinematics are all in terms of radians, right? Like the um, omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha t. That's all in terms of radians per second, all right? So if, if some evil professor gives you stuff in terms of revolutions per second, then you're, you need to convert, probably, to use those formulas. Um, the other, of course, is that if you have constant angular acceleration, we have a formula for that, right? Um, theta is equal to theta naught plus omega naught t plus one half alpha t squared, right? How is the angular acceleration related to torque? Well, we know that the net torque is equal to the moment of inertia times um, the angular acceleration, right? Um, and um, how do we calculate torque? Well, torque is r cross f as a vector. Of course, the right-hand rule tells us that, you know, the positive sense of the rotational direction that's developed by the torque. We talked about that. This one here, there are two forces involved, right? F1 and F2. Now, F1 is trying to make it rotate this way, right? F2 is trying to make it rotate that way, but not all of it. So we have to multiply by the sine of 30 to pick out the perpendicular part of the force. Perpendicular forces to the radial arm produce torques. Those that are parallel to the radial arm do not produce torques, right? And I will try to remember, I will try to do my best to slap the word magnitude on my questions for your test so that the plus minus is not an issue. Right, if I just ask for magnitude of torque, that works out better. I would say as a point of order, when you were trying to understand book solutions, like I gave you problems from Young and Friedman and they had answers in the back of the book, a lot of times they had a positive answer where I would have had a negative one. I think roughly speaking it's because they're always giving answers in terms of magnitudes, at least in as much as rotations are concerned. Now, um, anyway, there's that one. Um, the other thing I would say is we did talk a fair amount about how to calculate moments of inertia. I wouldn't be too surprised if there was like a moment of inertia calculation on your test three, something where you actually had to do the integral, but the integral wasn't that bad, right? I won't ask you to do a genuine three-dimensional integral in like the full technical sense. Like we, we worked out the, um, you know, the moment of inertia for a solid sphere, right? That is pretty much calculus three. Um, but there are, there are more simple things that you could do the integral for, right? Like working out the moment of inertia, for example, um, for a rod. This we did the calculus for. That's calculus one. It's not calculus three, right? Um, obviously, you need to know your moments of inertia. Um, let's see here. Angular velocity. It, you know, you, you got to know um, context, how to work this kind of problem. So angular velocity, excuse me, angular momentum rather, is I omega, right? The moment of inertia times the angular velocity. However, that formula is not particularly useful if we're asking for the angular velocity, angular momentum rather, of a point particle. So for a point particle, you really want to use m r cross v, or if you like, r cross p. r cross the momentum is the angular velocity, angular momentum. Ay, I keep saying velocity where I mean momentum, I'm sorry. Um, and this thing keeps flashing. I don't know why. Well, I blame you, Sam. Let's see here. <laughs> it's 
just like, <laughs> Sam is tapping his foot. <laughs> it just so happens the umbilicus is there, but it's still flashing. It's not you. Sorry. I thought you made a, a, a convenient villain, but it's not actually the case. Um, let's see here. Ah, rats. Um, these kind of problems, you have to make sure you use two things, right? The, the sum of the torques, but also the sum of the forces. So there's, there's some problems like this. I think we had, there's this one. There's also the rolling, the one I omitted from your homework, but we worked carefully in class. Both of these problems involve a synthesis of Newton's second law and the torque equation as applied to the body, right? So if you look at both of those, they're like that. Um, I almost always ask a question that's kind of sort of like this on, on test three. Like it, I, it's almost always there. And it, it, might be, it might be a sphere, it might be a cylinder, it might be something with an unknown shape where you're trying to calculate the moment of inertia from the way it rolls. These are all possible, all right? But the, the central um, unifying thing is we conserve energy, right? The potential energy at the start is the kinetic energy at the end. But kinetic energy for something that's a rigid body that's rolling has two aspects, right? It's got the spinning part of the energy, but it also has the translational part of the energy. So you have the rotational and the, and the translational kinetic energy. You have to think about both. Let's see here. Um, hmm. um, remember we found there was an error in my notes concerning the mass of pulley. Um, so I would say pay obviously much more attention to this solution than to the corresponding example in my, in my notes. This, I think this solution's fine. Um, but we do have to, the, the thing that makes it tricky is the tension on the one side and the tension on the other side, they don't have to be equal when the pulley is massive, right? That was a difference in the previous, um, when the pulley's not massive, then I think we had to have the tension was equal on both sides, um, if I remember correctly. But here they don't have to be. Um, and the sort of the, the, the disparity in the tensions corresponds to the torquing of the pulley, um, as you can kind of see in this equation right here, right? If T1 is not equal to T2, then you've got an angular acceleration of the pulley. And the moment of inertia of the pulley resists that, that change. Um, in motion. So that's just a quick overview. I, I hope you guys are ready. Um, I, I do. Uh, this is a great problem too, by the way. This one, something like this, is is a good is a good test three question. I like all the questions. What I'm trying to tell you. I'm sorry. I'm not very I'm not very helpful. You'd like me to tell you these five questions are on the test, right? But I, I can't say that to you. I want you to understand the concepts and hopefully I'll ask you similar questions, but there may be some ones that are genuinely new. The other thing um, I meant to talk to you guys about over the last week was the multiverse. I failed to talk to you guys about the multiverse. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I can summarize in a nutshell though. Basically the multiverse is something that people made up because for all intents and purposes, it's really, really hard to understand why the laws of physics w are what they are. So much so, like, things work out so well here for there to be life, for us to understand physics and everything else, that scientists have proposed an infinity of other universes just for the sake of not recognizing that the one we live in is special. It's more or less that simple. At the start of the book by Leonard Susskind, Susskind on the multiverse, he basically says in the preface of his book, creation scientists will use the arguments I'm giving in this book as if evidence as if they're evidence that, they're, that the universe has been created by a creator. That's not the intention of these arguments. It isn't the intention of his arguments, but it is the plain meaning of the multiverse concept. But anyway, we can talk more about that later. After the test, if you guys like. Wait a minute. There is no after the test. Ah! Yes, ah, Benjamin. Thanks, guys. If you haven't filled out the course evaluation yet, please do.